welcome back to the early bird show our motto through this show is to bring people from our own society on the show and talk to them regarding their lives their struggles their challenges their experiences and take inspiration from those things and grow in our own lives because somewhere we firmly believe in the fact that every person on this planet earth has something to offer if watched from the right lens the guest on the show today is the alumni of aeronautical society of india and he also happens to be my office colleague in this episode he has told us about the life as an alumni of aeronautical society of india this is a must watch for all the aviation geeks especially all the aesi pass outs you will definitely relate to it go enjoy the episode जनवरी ट्वेंटी में मैंने यहाँ पे इस कंपनी पे काम करना शुरू करा था गॉट टू नो यू ठीक है फिर धीरे धीरे हमारी बातें बढ़ी बीच बीच में कई बार बिकॉज ऑफ द कॉमन डिस्कशन पॉलिटिक्स की बात आती थी फिर कभी कभार हिस्ट्री की बातें आती थी एंड आई हैव सीन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट वेरियस टॉपिक्स बहुत सारे टॉपिक्स के बारे में आप बात करते थे ठीक है तो मुझे कहीं ना कहीं लगता था कि यार एक एवरेज बंदे को इतनी नॉलेज नहीं होती है मतलब या तो बहुत ज्यादा इंटरेस्ट हो या कुछ हो तो तभी मेरे दिमाग में हमेशा से रहता था मैंने कई बार आपको शायद बताया भी है या बोला भी है मे बी अपना ओपिनियन दिया है कि सर आपको कुछ करना चाहिए या फिर कुछ ब्लॉग करना चाहिए या कुछ किताब लिखनी चाहिए एक्स वाई जेड ऐसे करके तो लेट्स स्टार्ट फ्रॉम योर एजुकेशन वाला जो सीन है, है ना ए एस आई वाला एरोनोटिकल सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया ओके वहाँ पे लाइफ कैसी है क्या सीन होता है वो थोड़ा उसके बारे में आप पहले स्टार्ट करते हैं वहाँ से बात करते हैं ASI is a tough life. Of course, up to uh, it is no longer existing uh, because government has uh, barred all the uh, this kind of government bodies uh, because we have enough universities to give aeronautical degrees. Achha. At some time there was not. Uh, okay. So that's why since I think 2014 or 15, Supreme Court has. So there were many uh, educational institutes which were government bodies like IME Institute of Mechanical Engineers, IET Institute of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering. Similar was Aeronautical Society of India. So it was established in 1948, uh, but then since 1975 onwards, we started giving bachelor degrees also. Okay. Mainly for the Air Force pilots, those who had just joined with them some uh, basic graduations in right. physics and all. So they wanted to explore what they are doing. So of course they were pilots, they were trained, but they just some were there who were who really wanted to know what are the machines, how the parts work, and all. You mean to say the pilots who already had the CPL? like the uh, like the flying license and all yeah. but apart from that if they wanted a regular aeronautical degree correct not uh, so this was for air force pilots okay. those who got selected from cds with the Achha. basic graduation okay. and then uh, they want to explore the aeronautical field so they are proper air force pilots but they don't have much idea of you know aerodynamics lift drag okay. and all that stuff right, so right. that's where it was sta- started and it was going well and i think i enrolled in the august uh, july 2004 mm-hmm. so basically as you said uh, i am a history muff i i never wanted to be uh, in science actually but then uh, once i had a pressure from my father okay. that uh, you know i think uh, uh, you won't make a good career when you get, get into arts specifically history and all i don't see much future and of course my uh, teachers also pushed me that you know we would like to see you in science in, in fact if you see my 10th mark sheet so my social science marks are better than science and maths <laughs> <laughs> okay means uh, the school teacher pushed you your father yeah. pushed you and somehow you took up this aeronautical engineering aeronautical. so i was thinking because uh, practically there was no motivation for me for a science Achha. but luckily that time uh, uh, the, there was kalpana chawla incident right that sp- spread some awareness about aerospace aeronautical and i i i mean i just uh, i was just researching about her and then i came around, uh, around this uh, lovely book of kalam sir okay. wings of fire wings i was really fire. i yes, was really yes. inspired by that book mm-hmm. and then i decided that i will do aeronautical but by the time i was i think i had almost done my 11th and i was into my 12th okay this that, was which year 2003 
ियल and okay. where they were offering a government recognized degree of aeronautical mm-hmm. and i was very much fitting into that criteria and i just immediately went ahead okay. of course pune uh, we had uh, i was there for 2 years and then i moved to chennai and okay. chennai i completed my engineering in december 2009 okay so, so let's let's talk about let's stop here a bit uh, let's talk uh, a bit about the life at asi asi how is the life how are the people there uh, let's talk about a semester let's talk about a semester and how the things go on so uh, typically as i said this was for people who have already graduated okay so they had some idea of uh, maybe mathematics and uh, physics and to some extent uh, principles of flight and all that stuff so what used to happen we used to get only two subject per semester okay and all my regular engineering friends in mumbai they would laugh at me well only two subject only. per semester <laughs> right. Right, right and that too you know so the pass, passing percentage yearly of asi was around 3 to 5% so basically uh-huh. out of 100 student only 3 to 5% would become graduate success graduates. rate is very low very low it and because the competition is very high because it's uh, you know government bodies uh, uh, doing the uh, iit retired iit professors do the cross uh, paper corrections okay. and they are uh, uh, very stringent while correcting the papers why do you think that they push too much like 3% is like very low very low yeah why do you think they pushed that much i think they uh, stressed more on quality there mm-hmm. was no grace marks i have personally failed uh, twice 50% was a passing first of all 35 is a regular passing engineering percent our for us is what uh, for 50 and i uh, there are some grace marks but then for us uh, i got once 48 and once 49 48 means 48 49 is 49 so i actually never understood this that a guy getting 50% mark so and i also got in electrical engineering 51 okay uh, another guy, one of my friend got 49 mm-hmm. so i never understood that what these two percent made difference between me and him exactly but then it was it was what rules it was. are rules. rules are rules and it was very tough i mean we really had to struggle hard because what they used to do although there were only two subjects mm-hmm. like we had fluid mechanics okay Uh, so fluid mechanics was in our second semester so fluid mechanics like for mechanical engineers and hydraulic engineers those who work in dams and all so it is it is taught in parts okay this section may be first year this section may be second for us all the four year combined in one semester okay so that used to because the teacher who used to taught teachers so, so he would say well i used to i am studying this in my masters actually <laughs> <laughs> actually means the density of the syllabus is too much too much yes means for uh, the people outside it, it it might seem that it is only two, two subject yeah. but the density the chapters the topics included in that yes, uh, yes. top subject right. is too much too much okay. and this was not the case with only fluid mechanics whether it is thermodynamics strength of materials uh, workshop technology engineering drawing you know <laughs> what for final year students would learn that you know maybe we will be learning in the one semester right so to cover up everything would be very difficult so that's why pune people you know they had recently started an institute so there were very good professors mm-hmm. but they didn't know how much depth they should go so that we may pass exam exactly what when this chennai institute was established by krishnan sir who was one of the contemporaries of kalam sir mm-hmm. so he understood the design and the uh, uh, vision behind this course Okay. so they knew how much depth because if you see if you have, if you want to study a four year syllabus in just six months mm-hmm. you just get lost you know in the syllabus itself so they know how much depth should go into so what is required for an analytical perspective those topic they should go in depth right, right right so whatever lecturers were there in our pune and there were some institutes in indore gaziabad 
but they were all mechanical engineers or uh, you know all these people so they never knew the aeronautical aspect behind the designing this course exactly. so that was always a plus point in chennai mm. so that's why if you see uh, if i mean in those days i mean there will if there are 100 people passed in a subject i think 75% to 80% would be from chennai only okay because there it was properly defined people knew okay this particular uh, part of the subject is related to aeronautical this we should go in depth other things we should just touch upon just brush upon we should have a basic knowledge about it okay so as you said you started from pune and then you shifted to chennai, chennai. right yeah. so what is that process like wh- why the transition is there like like i said this is a government body it's mm-hmm. not a regular university mm-hmm. okay so uh, it can be done through correspondence although it does require classes you cannot study on your own and give like normal there are various uh, you know universities offering very simple kind of courses but it is not that's why the passing percentage is very low uh, so it was so our uh, so institute was just a medium between us and aeronautical society of india mm-hmm. so now regular engineering college well they may debar us because of uh, lack of attendance Okay. Or maybe we are not uh, performing enough in practicals. There they can cut our marks. For us, there was nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Institute was just a medium between us and their ASI. Okay. So we could do, uh, we could give exam from anywhere. So my first my two years I was in Pune, and I understood that uh, professors here are good, but they are not good enough for us to impart the aeronautical specific knowledge and make us pass the subjects. Mm-hmm. And when we used to, we used to the, when the results would be out, we used to see in the websites. That time we would realize that oh. Chennai percentage are very high. So when uh, I also went to there, and then I understood the difference. The lecturers here are very uh, shrewd and very clever with what has to be taught when it comes to what ASI is expecting from us. Okay, so you mean to say it was within your choice to choose the Chennai campus Chennai, yes. and leave the Pune campus? Like we have this okay. Chartered Accountant Association of India. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that is Delhi-based organization that will award you Chartered Accountant degree based on which you can work in any industry. Mm-hmm. Similarly, ASI will give you a nautical engineering degree, but this is not bound to any college. Right. Institute, right. you can choose from your convenience, depending on your, you know, distance from maybe somebody is local Pune, he doesn't want to shift. Mm-hmm. So there were institutes in Bombay, uh, various other cities, but when it comes to quality, it was Chennai for okay. sure. So uh, most of the people who would start ASI, their journey would end in Chennai only. Okay. <laughs> they will finally go to Chennai. Chennai, okay. yes. So it was like Mecca of... ASI people. ASI people. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you passed out in 2009. Yeah. Right. And after that, you did teaching for a certain period. For six to eight months. Yeah. For six to eight months. Okay. Definitely, a person who has passed out from ASI has a lot of knowledge yeah. at his end, and he can definitely, you know, opt for this thing. Okay. Before I talk about the teaching part, I want to talk about this thing. This is a little bit of abstract question, uh, a feeling wala question. Uh, the question is like, uh, do you feel like that you are a proud ASI pass out? Yeah, when I passed out, <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, when I was studying and, you know, so I, it took me around five and a half years, but it was a four year course uh-huh. and uh, that was like good. People take more than six years, okay. average people, so I, five, five and a half is very good. And those okay. who do is four and a half, five years, that's brilliant. Proud. Proud. Uh, <laughs> you know? So, I, when I used to wonder, uh, when I was studying, I was saying, the day I'll pass, no, the final exam, uh-huh. and when I'll get a confidence that, okay, I'll pass this exam, this is my final paper, I will really sleep like maybe 14, 16 hours uh, right. you know, after the exam. Right. But what happened, you know, I gave the exam and I passed out and I, you know, some of, I mean, some of my friends and uh, uh, peers, so then we were discussing, okay, what is the answer of this question? So, uh, I just uh, kind of matched up and then I said, okay. 100% chances I am passing. <laughs> <laughs> and in that okay. happiness, I couldn't sleep only. <laughs> so yes, uh, uh, what ASI made me is uh, to be uh, disciplined and quality oriented. Okay. You know, uh, whatever you are doing, you do it with a quality. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it has its positives and negatives for sure. Uh, positives, yes, you are quality oriented, but then uh, you are a little bit cut away from uh, the other parts of the knowledge that you get. Right, right. Okay. okay. Like in regular engineering colleges, you know, they, they, so we didn't have any practical or anything. So what used to be OGT. After we complete our course, there would be OGT, on-job okay. training, on-job so training. where we will be given stipend mm-hmm. depending on our percentage of marks that we have got. Maybe if you are, I, I got above 60, so I was getting 3,000 per month. Okay. Those who were 65, they were getting 5,000. So where did you get uh, this employment or uh, like? I didn't, I, I applied for it. Uh-huh. By the time I got a uh, teaching offer from an Anna industry college. Okay, okay. So I thought, uh, you know, I may go for my master's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was thinking that way. I'll give a gate and uh, OGT again will be six to eight months. 
and uh, you know again uh, it would be tough because uh, so i was from avionics background mostly i would have gone uh, i would have got in cabs mm -hmm. center for airborne uh, services which is in bangalore okay or in national Aer aerospace laboratories these two options i had but i uh, i prefer to stay and uh, do my teaching in anna university college okay then i moved to mumbai and by the time i got a job offer in ahmedabad okay Thank you so much guys for watching this episode till the end. Being from the aviation background myself, I have a huge respect for all the AESI pass outs. Because I know the amount of hard work you guys put in just to attain the passing marks. So kudos to you. Apart from this episode, we recorded two other episodes with Akhilesh and topics of those episodes were centered around the left and right ideologies as well as upcoming 2024 Lok Sabha elections respectively. Those episodes will be out very soon. Till then, stay tuned and keep watching the early bird show. Bye-bye.